Hi, this is Fred with Quality One Engravers. I'm going to do a real simple job that has uh, three columns and three rows. And I'm going to copy something that's already a job that's already existing. So I'm going to import a JPEG and import. And just drag it in here. And basically, the customer sent me this, and I turned it into a PDF, and then I turned it into a JPEG, just so it was a small file to bring in here. And this is what's going on there. Uh, there's a list of names that all of these are changing. All the names are changing. Now, I'm making an assumption that Brandy and 24 and 1995 all go together. So uh, I'm going to try to create it in that manner so the first thing I'm going to do is I have determined that the text size is 3 8 of an inch by measuring it so I'm going to click on my text and instead of my normal text compose I'm going to use my frame text okay so this is what pops up the first thing that I'm going to do is set up 0.375 high and right now I'm in the frame properties. Okay, so I'm in the frame properties and I want my left margin to be uh, 0.45. I want my top margin to be 0.3. My bottom to be 0.3. And then my right margin, I measured this to be about 6.5. So here's what I um, the space I'm giving it available. Obviously, there might be longer names, and maybe this number will change. But I'm going to just type something in. This is going to be I'm going to make it in all caps. Name one, name two, name three. And usually, I do not type in the actual name here. I usually try to give it something that I, I can recognize that it that it is in the right order. So the next one I want to do, I want to do the same thing over again. And then the difference is that this left margin, I want this to be at 8.5. And the right margin, I don't know, this is kind of ambiguous, but I'm going to make it 3.5. And again, I want this to be 0.3 and this to be 0.3. Now, just so you know, I'm still in the in the frame toolbar you go down here and make sure you click on the little icon right there oops as I lost it it's all right left margin at 8.5 I need the exercise right margin at 3.5 and then 0.3 and 0.3 and then this I'm going to put, uh, I don't know, N01. Oops. N01. Enter. N02. Enter. N03. And click away. Okay. Now I'm going to do the last line that I'm going to oops, click on my text tool. And this time the left margin is 11.75. And this is uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. And this one I measured at 0.45. And this is going to be uh, YR1, enter. Oops. Enter, one R2, enter, one R3, enter. Okay, so there's my three years. Now, one of the things that you may have noticed is that if I double click on the baseline here, I had these all left adjusted. So if one of these needed to be center adjusted, that would it would have obviously centered it in the field. But you can see this is left adjusted, this is left adjusted, and so is this one. Now, another thing we need to add here this is a, an item I like to do is I like to plate the object so I now have a plate which is this 2 by 14 now if you're going to be doing cutouts or things like that it's kind of nice to know or if you're just looking at placement now another thing I need to do on this job is I need to put this little hole here so let's say that it's a 
I don't know what size hole it is, but I'm going to say it's 0 0.09 for a radius. And I'm going to drop it in right here. And I'm going to look and see exactly where that's at. So that might be a little bit big. I'm going to change it to um, 0.125. Okay, and I'm going to go to the center of this. And I know the X, it's probably at about 0.25. And the Y dimension is definitely going to be at one inch. So it's set, that's the center center of this hole. So I need to duplicate this. And I can go Control Alt D, which is my shortcut, two and a quarter. That's good. So Control D. And I'm going to just use my Shift and the arrow key just to move it over. And because I'm a little lazy, I'm going to try and figure it out this way. I know that it goes 14 inches which I guess I could have typed in and then I'm going to minus 0.25 okay which that didn't work let me undo that okay it's at an X dimension of 14 I click in the field and then I click to the right and minus 0.25 and enter okay that time it worked I'm not sure what I'd done F8 to zoom to my plate so there I have all the ingredients to my plate now I also set up a junk text file and this is where I typed in all the names now I typed in the first name the the number and then the date and then of course the name the number and the date and so forth all the way down the line now remember these are separated by tabs so there are instances that the tab for this will be a little bit longer so it will be a little bit askew but this is the format that engrave lab wants to want wants it in so the first plate that it's going to be doing is this one the second the third and the fourth and of course you could have several plates here and it will just make more more files or more plates to engrave so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of this and I'm going to go to my badges now this would also be a good time that you might want to assign some colors to thing so uh, number 13 something that you're not going to cut would be the outside and maybe the holes here you're going to do something to that maybe apply a tool path maybe a drill hole so I'm going to make those in red number five and then all of my text I know that it's three-eighths of an inch so I'm going to take my little handy dandy calculator 0.375 divided by 8 so that means it's going to be an 047 cutter so we're real close to 050 is probably the cutter that you're going to use so I'm going to assi assign it P50 so here over here I have so if I go to run this job again some year from now it's real easy to know that I probably used a 50 cutter for it okay so let me just go ahead and take this and move it off to the left off of the plate it was really just for reference so I've got everything selected here and I'm gonna go to my badges and now I can see it says name one name two name three so that's gonna be a problem because if you remember my text that I have here which I closed out it went name one number one year so this will not work so I'm gonna cancel out of this so what I need to do is I need to ungroup these arrange ungroup arrange and ungroup now this would also be a great time for you to save it once you've got this much work into it you don't wanna obviously redo it again so now that they're ungrouped I have a hotkey that um, go for or arrange and I don't know why engrave lab to the front is in the back to the back is in the front so I relabeled these with hotkeys so uh, I'm gonna select this and control B for me is to the back and uh, that's something we'll have to take up with engrave lab but anyways I'm sending these to the back now if I want to see how this is gonna engrave I can also go control alt L and I can look at the order so here's name one number one year one the circles are in the way 
and so forth so that's how it's it, it is going to engrave now if I wanted to I could take all of these and go control B to take them all to the back and then control alt L then all this text is in the back I'm holding the shift key and arrowing down so I'm gonna say okay anyways I'm gonna select everything and now I'm gonna go to badges and I'm I have to click through all of these variables because some of these might be boilerplate so I'm gonna browse and it already knows that I want to go to this delete soon junk text directory and I open it up and here's a couple things that I had already set up um, the plate size is a 12 by 24 which of course this could have been you know as small as as 20 or, or whatever size and then because I know it's going to be cut out I like to have 0.3 inches on the top and 0.3 inches on the left so it has room to cut you may want a little bit more or a little bit less there um, and then vertical spacing I know I want about 0.3 inches be between them so maybe maybe in your job you want 0.5 inches uh, obviously since they're two inches you could conceivably get five in here so you know if you wanted to kind of squeeze things down you might be able to get one more plate in here we're gonna leave it at 0.3 just for argument's sake of course if you're if you had a bigger machine you could also put in some horizontal spacing so I browse for this text and I say okay now it comes up with how it's going to substitute and I can see okay name one number one you're so this is why the headers are kind of nice that's why I put names on it rather than actual text in there now I do also put text in there also because I want to see how it's going to compress okay and that's how it comes out sorry let me just I gotta call you back Cheryl bye okay anyways pardon the interruption so here we have this plate now of course there might be an issue with how close these are but you can see that each one of these are different are individual entities and it brought it in now one of the things that you're going to want to do is you're going to of course want to cut this out so we i know i made it p13 so i'm going to select so i'm going to hold the alt key and go to P13 and now I can select this go to engrave create a tool path and create a mail and then select whatever tool I'm going to use maybe I'm going to use an 093 and I'm going to go 075 deep in one pass and I'm going to use since it's an 093 I'm going to give it a 93 cutter and then say OK and then I'm going to come back and have all of it displayed. So here's my tool path that's going to cut around these badges. Here's the engraving that I'm going to do. And then, of course, I can select just these dots to do whatever tool path is necessary there. And obviously, you can set up a two-liner, a three-liner, or a four-liner using the same, same format.